a home. She said, my bills are coming due, Lord. Six days is not that long. She hears a voice so still and low. He says, I've moved like that before. I can do this little thing. the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. Amen. If someone is standing near you, wish them a happy Mother's Day this morning. Amen. We appreciate all of our mothers here today. We wouldn't be here without them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're so glad. Amen. We can celebrate with you this morning. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. We're thankful for our mother the church this morning amen that we can come into and worship the lord together amen let's just sing and magnify god this morning let's worship the lord together praise the lord everybody how many y'all know we need to have revival to come into this place now thank you jesus
no, 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 no. You have called me from my sorrow to gladness, and I have what more could I There is 
Let's lift up our hands for just a moment. God, we put our trust in you. God, let us surrender our whole lives to you, God. Everything we do, everything we say, God, let it glorify you, Jesus, God. that hand clap thing one more time. 
a little more vigorously, a little more, amen, involved in that. Praise God. Come on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He didn't create us to fear. He didn't create us to worry. Hallelujah. Come on now. When we do worry and we do have fear, amen, we're not trusting in God the way that we need to. Amen. We need to pray, God, increase my faith. Hallelujah. Increase my faith this morning. Well, it's good to see everybody here this morning. Good to see some families that are back with us for the first time. Amen. Uh, praise God. Welcome y'all back. Amen. For the first time. Hallelujah. Since, this, since we started back having church services. Hallelujah. In kind of a normal setting here. Things are not quite back to normal yet. Hallelujah. But we're getting there. Praise God. We're still doing this for a handshake. And this for a hug. And now we're going to do this for a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother. If you're still afraid to shake hands or get close to anybody, praise God, then there are some hand gestures that you can give. Praise God. Hallelujah. To say what's really on your heart and on what's on your mind today. Praise God. What a, what a wonderful day it is. Hallelujah. To be back in the house of God with God's faithful, dedicated people. Thank you for being faithful throughout the pandemic. Thank you for praying. Thank you for reading your Bibles. Thank you for tuning in online and listening to our, uh, our messages. Amen. Brother, Brother Roe preached a message. Brother, uh, uh, Brother Kent preached a message. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Thomas came in here and done a tremendous job. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Through that pandemic. So, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are. We made it. <laughs> We made it. Praise God. Hope we don't have any relapses back into all that mess. Hopefully from this point forward, it'll get better and better and better and better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we're fixing to pray this morning. Amen. And uh, my wife's brother, Larry, is going in for a biopsy this coming Tuesday. Amen. And it's, uh, uh, he has lung cancer. He has had COPD for, uh, I guess, around 10 years now, close to it. And now he has uh, developed lung cancer. And he's going in for a very dangerous biopsy, praise God, this coming Tuesday morning. So we're going to pray for him. We're going to anoint a prayer call for him this morning. And amen. And get it to him. Uh, praise God. We're going to also anoint a few extra prayer calls. If there's anybody else that would like to have a prayer call this morning, if there's any minister available this morning, if you would step up right quickly and help me to pray over these prayer calls, and we'll make sure that Larry gets one. And if there's anybody else here that may need one, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's pray together. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we anoint these prayer calls. God, we send them out in faith right now. God, believing in you, God, trusting in you, God, that you're a healer, that you're a deliverer, God, that you are a miracle worker, God. Brother Larry Clark needs a miracle, God. There's other folks here this morning, God, that need a miracle, God. Hallelujah, God. So we're anointing these prayer cloths, God. We're pleading the blood of Jesus, God, over their need and over their situation, God. And we're putting our faith in you, God. And I trust and confidence in you, God, that you're going to send your angels, God, with these prayer calls, God. And you're going to minister, God, to the needs that are necessary, God. Hallelujah, God. Lord, only you know, God, how to heal and raise somebody up out of the afflictions, God, that, Lord, that we face in life sometimes, God. But you've done it before, and, God, we believe that you can do it again, God. You can do it again, God. Hallelujah. You can heal these bodies. Hallelujah, God. Grant miracles, God, to these bodies this morning, God. Hallelujah, God. And we give you praise and honor and glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Sister Ralph, if you want to come and get Larry's. Hallelujah. We anointed five or six extra prayer cloths there. So if you need a prayer cloth, just raise your hand. Amen. If you would just raise your hand, we would... Uh, get a prayer cloth to you. In the midst of our jubilation this morning and being back in church, and I'm sure that a lot of you know this already, uh, and some of you may not know this because we were so late being able to put it on social media, praise God, but Brother Troy Bremenham, uh, 
man that's been uh, been coming to this church for many years, probably close to 20 years. He passed away this past Friday morning. He was sitting right over there on that front row Wednesday night. He looked as healthy as he has in a long time. He was sitting over there. I think Thursday evening he developed some chest pains. He went to the hospital. He had several uh, things that happened with him at the hospital on Friday night. And then on Friday morning he passed away. I got a phone call from his son Jason around 8 o'clock on Friday morning telling me of his passing. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, it is a sad thing to hear about. It is a sad thing to to know that he has passed passed away. But this morning, we're going to pray for his family. We're going to pause just long enough this morning to pray for his family, pray for Jason, his son, Tony, his son. The, some of the children that Brother Birmingham had lived in Arkansas, and a lot of his family was from Arkansas, and he was from Arkansas originally. So there's a lot of his family that we never got to meet. We never met some of his children. We never met some of his family, a lot of his family. But they are all needing our prayers this morning, praise God, along with uh, a lot of other people, praise God. So if you would, stretch your hands, amen, toward heaven. Let's pray for Brother Brimingham's family as they are dealing with the grief, God, that they are suffering right now over his passing. God, I pray right now, God, for Brother Brimingham's children, God, his grandchildren, God, his great-grandchildren, God, his uh, Lord, his extended family, God, Lord, that are living out there in Arkansas, God, and possibly many other family members that live in various parts of this country, God. We pray for them right now. God, we pray that you would comfort them, strengthen them, and help them, God, through this grieving process. Hallelujah. Grieving, God, over this lost loved one, God. I pray, God, today, hallelujah, that you would reach down and uphold them. Hallelujah, wrap your arms around this family right now, God, this church family, God. Hallelujah, as we have lost someone, God, that has been a part of this church family for a long time, God. We pray, God, this morning that you would comfort this church family. Hallelujah, those that were close to Brother Bramingham, those that knew him well, those that, amen, hung out with him and ate meals with him and went places with him, God. Hallelujah, God, we pray for each and every one of them, God. Hallelujah, God, that you would comfort their hearts, God, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, God, we are extending this prayer now, God, to all of the names, God, that are listed on our screen this morning, God. There's so many, God, that have called our church for prayer. God, we want to pray for them now, God. Hallelujah. Many of those are sick. Many of those, God, are fighting diseases in their body. Many of those, God, are wrestling, God, with situations in life that are, that, are, that are really too big for them to wrestle with by themselves. God, there's a lot of people, God, that need your help right now, God. A lot of people that we know very well, God, that need a, an intervention, God. Hallelujah. On your behalf, God. They need you to intervene, God. Hallelujah. And help them and heal them and raise them up, God, from their afflictions, God. We're praying, God, for each and every one of them, God, this morning. Touch them, God. Heal their bodies, God. Give them what they need, God. And we'll give you all the praise and glory and honor this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. For the help that God gives to us. While the choir comes. While the choir comes and gets ready to sing this morning. Hallelujah. Turn around and give somebody a big thumbs up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My wife told me Sister Kiba is here. Where is she at? Raise your hand, Sister Kiba. There she is, sitting right over there. Hallelujah. Hadn't seen Sister Kiba in months and months and months and months. She had a, a, an accident and was not able to come to church. Hallelujah. Was not able to come to church for a long time. And then this coronavirus thing hit. Hallelujah, and she hadn't been able to come to church throughout all of that stuff. So, Sister Keeva, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see, amen, uh, Brother Curtis and Sister Chris this morning. Good to see all of the rest of the church folks that are coming back in now. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand toward heaven, and let's pray for this young lady.
see several visitors in the house. Hallelujah. If you are standing next to a visitor, turn to them right now and give them a thumbs up. That's a handshake from Higher Praise Tabernacle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for waking up this morning with coming to church on your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be here simply because it's Mother's Day. That's all right. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We've got folks that are normally in our church that are off in places with their mothers and uh, folks today. So, hallelujah. We're so glad to have every visitor that's in the house this morning. Thank you for coming. Amen. And to worship God with us, hallelujah, today. Praise God. If our ushers would get ready to come, we're going to get right on into the message here as quickly as we can. We know that some of you have got things scheduled this evening. Hallelujah. Hopefully it includes spending some time with your mom or, amen, uh, sharing some, praise God, sharing some uh, time with her today. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. If, you, if you've got a mother that's still alive and well, you need to, amen, call her today. If she's not where you can get to her, you need to at least call her today and let her know that you love her and appreciate her because there will come a time when your mom's going to be gone the way that mine is and a lot of other people here, their mom's already passed away. There'll come a time when you won't be able to call them, you won't be able to visit them, you won't be able to see them on Mother's Day. And Hallelujah. The whole, the whole situation has changed for you then. Praise God. You'll go back down memory lane and, amen, and wish that you could call your mom on the phone again and wish her happy Mother's Day and those kind of things. Praise God. So if you got a mom that's alive and well, Amen. Make sure you make contact with her today. As already has been said, Brother Rowe started out the service saying Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah to all of the moms that are here today. We, amen, uh, agree with that statement. Praise God. And we just want to add our Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms that are here today. Hallelujah. And thank you. If you're visiting, if you're visiting mom or whatever, we are so glad that you came to uh, church with us today. Praise God. We're going to ask Brother Michael to ask the blessing over the offering. Hallelujah. We're going to ask you, if you would, to stand and come to the front and put your offering in the offering pans. That's way, that way we don't have to pass the thing around for everybody to put their hands on it. Just drop your money in there. Amen. And God will bless you for it. Brother Michael, ask the blessing over the offering. Amen. Give us unto the Lord this morning. Praise God.
be in God's house, say amen. Amen. I'm glad to be here as well. When service is over today, we want all the ladies, all the moms that are here to exit out the back door, or if you parked out front, at least go by the back door back there in the uh, in the hallway. Uh, Sister Morel has a gift there. She's going to have a gift for every mom in the house. And also, I want to announce that there has been a backdrop. I guess Sister Clack has put the backdrop up in the hallway. Hallelujah. A uh, very beautiful backdrop back out there in the hallway for you to take pictures uh, with your mother today if you'd like to. Praise God. I appreciate her being thoughtful and doing that uh, for us today. Praise God. So you can get with your mom and take a picture. Hallelujah. After church in the hallway with a very beautiful backdrop back there. And uh, take advantage of that. Praise God. Those pictures will come in handy someday. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm a little nervous this morning. Praise God. I, I thought I knew what I was going to talk about until I got here this morning. And then the Lord took me down another path. So I'm just going to follow the Lord down that path. Is that all right? I'm just going to follow the Lord. And what He impressed upon my heart very, very early this morning. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 27. This is a chapter in Proverbs <clears throat> that talks about the virtuous woman. Praise God. I'm not going to read it all. I know you've heard it. Amen, many times in the past. And if you haven't never heard it, hadn't never read it, then it would behoove you to read it again. Praise God, because there's a lot of things to learn here. Amen, about the virtuous, the properties of the virtuous woman. Praise God. She was quite a unique individual. And as you read these various verses of Scripture, if you find out that you're not quite up to par with the virtuous woman, then don't give up on yourself. Don't throw in the towel and say, I can't be all that I am supposed to be. Just try a little harder. <laughs> Put a little more effort into doing the best that you can. Hallelujah. And where you are slack, God will take up your slackness this morning. I want to read verse 27, Proverbs 31 and verse 27. It simply says, <clears throat> She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. This virtuous woman, she looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. I want to talk to you this morning just from this little simple title, Her Household. Somebody say, Her Household. Praise God. I want to focus on that for just a little while this morning and hopefully help somebody here. Praise God. You can be seated this morning. Hallelujah. She looketh well to the ways of her household. We hear a lot today spoken about original intent. We've heard that spoken a lot about. Amen, over the past, oh, several, several years, amen, as people have uh, brought cases against this country and against the Supreme Court or brought cases to the Supreme Court, amen, fighting the, uh, the Constitution of the United States and fighting to change the Constitution of the, uh, of the United States. So I think there's even a book out there entitled Original Intent Today. I don't think I've read it. I've read a lot of books in that, in that field, but I don't think I've actually read that book that is entitled Original Intent. Praise God. But it's obvious uh, today that we are living in uh, that in the school of law, amen, the, word, the words original intent simply means that the Constitution of the United States should be interpreted according to the intentions of, of the framers of the Constitution. So when you hear the words original intent, it is referring to, amen, the intentions of the framers of the Constitution. In our judicial system today, 
we have opposing views like it is in all political arenas and amen as it is with all points of view there is usually amen opposing points of view hallelujah amen so it's the same way in our judicial system today they are opposing views amen that is the the the, the group that stands with the original intent of the framers of the Constitution, amen, versus the living document theory, amen, that we can modernize and we can change the Constitution of the United States as times change. So I don't know what point of view uh, of view you may have here today, hallelujah, but there, there are basically two points of view, sticking with the original intent of the framers of the Constitution or the other view is changing the Constitution as times modernize and change. The miracle of the United States being able to exist the way that it has for so long is because of the genius, amen, of the founding fathers and the genius of the Constitution of the United States. Now, I, as well as all of you that are here this morning, we know that times change. Hallelujah. Times are changing. Things are changing. Hallelujah. I know that times changes. Amen. But I don't want America to change. I don't want it to change. I don't want it to become like many other countries of the world. Amen. That have changed over the past uh, 100 years, 200 years. Hallelujah. When I, when I see the changes that these other countries are making, amen, most of those changes are not for the better. Amen. So if the original intent of the framers of the Constitution had a wonderful idea, amen, why don't we just stick with their wonderful intent, amen, for the Constitution of the United States, right? At least that's my point of view. Hallelujah. I said all of that. I said all of that. It's not what I'm preaching about this morning. I said all of that to lead into what I want, I'm going to speak about today. Amen. I'm going to speak about Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Something that I kind of got away from for a little while because I realized that they are a lot of different feelings concerning Mother's Day. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people, amen, with different feelings concerning Mother's Day. In fact, we've got people that don't even come to church on Mother's Day. They won't even come to church on Father's Day because their relationship with mom and dad was not very good, amen, or not good at all. And they, they just simply don't want to hear, amen, about Mother's Day and Father's Day. So for that reason, amen, and many other reasons, amen, for a little while there, we kind of got away from uh, saying anything about it being Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Amen. But since that's what most of the uh, of the people's minds are on today, I'm going to try to take advantage, amen, of where your mind is already at. Praise God. I want to talk about this morning, amen, the original intent of Mother's Day. Hallelujah. The original intent for Mother's Day. First of all, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, In-Laws' Day, Grandchildren's Day, and all the other days that are being created. Hallelujah. Amen. All of these already holidays and possibly sometime in the future becoming holidays, amen, all of them are relatively new to us. They're relatively new in society. Hallelujah. 200 years ago, there wasn't such a thing as Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, and these other days. Hallelujah. In fact, amen, Mother's Day is actually 112 years old, amen, in America. Mother's Day is 112. You, think, you say, well, that's not that, you know, new. Amen, it's 112 years old. Well, when you take, amen, there's 7,000 years of human history, and Mother's Day has only been around for 112 years. Amen. In, in light of that, it is relatively new Amen to society, amen, to celebrate a Mother's Day. Praise God. Amen. Anna Jarvis, amen, is deemed to be the woman who officially got Mother's Day started in America. It was first held, amen, in St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia on May the 10th in 1908. Hallelujah. So Anna Jarvis coordinated, put together, 
amen, a Mother's Day service for her church there, amen, in West Virginia, a Methodist church in Grafton, West Virginia on May the 10th in 1908. Hallelujah. There was a purpose for that Mother's Day. There was intent, amen, for that Mother's Day. Hallelujah. But evidently that Mother's Day, amen, went went so well, amen, that the Congress, the, amen, the, the political, amen, arena, amen, heard of the Mother's Day that was celebrated, amen, in Grafton, West Virginia on May the 10th, 1908. Hallelujah. So in 1914, Congress passed a law designating Mother's Day as a national holiday. It took a few years, amen, but after they heard of the success that she had in putting on a Mother's Day at her church. Amen. Evidently, news got out. Word got around. It got a hold to Congress, and Congress dedicated Mother's Day as a national holiday in 1914 here in America. Miss Jarvis's original intent, listen to me. This is all history. You can find it for yourself. Miss Jarvis's original intent for Mother's Day was to use that day in her church to form what was called Mother's Day Work Clubs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I know this ain't real exciting right now, but nevertheless, that was her intent, was to get these mothers, amen, to join Mother's Day Work Clubs for the purpose of teaching women how to properly care for their children. So the original intent, amen, of the woman that got it all started back there, amen, was to form Women's Day work clubs so that women could be taught how to properly take care of their children. Now, there, uh, amen, not to take away from anybody else, there had been several attempts, amen, after the Civil War to set aside a day just to honor mothers. Amen. So far, 50 years, 45 years or 40 years prior to Mother's Day, amen, there had been attempts by different women and different societies, amen, to set aside a day of honor for mothers. The purpose, amen, even back then, right after the Civil War, amen, was uh, to, uh, for Mother's Day to work on a local level to bring women together to offer them help, advice, and counsel on raising their children, raising their children. Well, without children, you can't be a mother, right? Hallelujah. So there was a purpose behind the intent, amen, for 40 or 50 years there was efforts made, amen, to set aside a day to honor mothers. Hallelujah. Amen. Over the years, amen, why, why is this important to us? Hallelujah. Why did it keep building and building and building until it became Mother's Day, amen, here in America? Well, over the years, women started having more children than they normally had before the Civil War in that period after the Civil War. Women started having more children and more children and more children, amen. So it, 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 it got to the place that, amen, women were having as a general rule, in the South at least, they were having anywhere from 6 to 12 children. <laughs> now, I don't want to say anything about that because we got some folks in here that's got somewhere between 6 and 12 kids. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and anybody that's ever tried to raise two or three kids knows that, hey, there's time you need some help. Amen. And especially those that had, listen, I heard of families, I heard of women, women that actually gave birth, amen, to 18 or 20 children. I don't know how they done it, but they did. They kept busy. Amen. Having children. Well, it was, uh, cotton became king of the South. Amen. And it became a means, <laughs> amen, by which to produce Labor in the fields. Hallelujah. The more children a man or woman had, hallelujah, the more help they had to raise their crops, to raise their food, to raise the cotton, amen, by which most of them, amen, made their living back then. Praise God. So, hallelujah. 
After, but after it was made a national holiday, amen, after the political people got involved and made it a national holiday, the purpose and the intent of Mother's Day was changed by the commercialization of that day. Amen. It was so changed that Miss Jarvis, the lady that started Mother's Day in her Methodist church in West Virginia, in her latter years, she came out and denounced Mother's Day. She, in fact, spent the latter part of her life trying to get Mother's Day removed from the calendar. Hallelujah. So, amen. There were some changes made, amen, from the original intent of having a Mother's Day. Hallelujah. So, as with every other uh, important movement in history, amen, the intent, the original intent of the author or the originator of something is important for us to reexamine from time to time. Hallelujah. It would behoove us all, amen, to go back and read the Constitution of the United States. In fact, I've done that, amen, over the past couple of years. I went back and read the Constitution of the United States, amen. Sometimes I feel... Uh, uh, compelled to do it again, hallelujah, just to remind myself of the original intent of the fathers of this nation. As it is with the Constitution of the United States, so is it with a lot of other things, hallelujah. Amen. We need to go back, amen, and reexamine the original intent, amen, why things were started, amen, in our world. Miss Jarvis was a religious woman. And I suppose she was concerned about helping women to learn how to raise their children. So on this Mother's Day, on this Mother's Day, amen, in 2020, shouldn't we, amen, have, have the same concerns that she had, amen, in her original intent for Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Shouldn't, amen, re we re-examine, amen, why she started it so that we can go back to the original intent, intent of why it was starting. Praise God. On this Mother's Day, I want every mother to know just how vital, amen, and how important it is for you to know how to raise your children. It's important. It's, it's more vital today, amen, than it was, amen, 112 years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah because of the changing times, because of all of the exterior influences, amen, upon the family today, amen, it is probably more vital today than it was back then, amen, for mothers to know how to raise their children. Parenting is a dual effort of both fathers and mothers, amen, and each of them need to be focused on their role in being a parent and parenting their children. Amen. But we're speaking on Mother's Day today. Hallelujah. So let's focus on mothers in their relationship. Amen. With their children. Praise God. Hallelujah. We realize today that women with children have many different hats that they have to wear. Hallelujah. You got a lot of different hats that you have to wear. A lot of women today work a full-time job. Amen. And then they have to come home from a full-time job and try to, amen, parent their children and try to help their children, amen, to be the best that they can. Hallelujah. So, amen, it is no longer a one-parent, amen, workforce today. And a lot of families are in most families. Moms and dads are both working. Hallelujah. So the, what, what I'm getting at there is the time that you spend with your children is a lot more limited today than it was back then. Amen. Mothers mostly, amen, did not go out to the workforce. They had all day, amen, to spend with their children and teach their children and train their children. Amen. But today your time mostly, or at least most of your time, amen, is limited to just a few hours a day that you get to spend with your children. Praise God. Most of the time, when a woman has a child, that child is not shuffled off to someone else immediately. It is almost immediately given back to the mother to hold. They're on that delivery table, 
Amen. If you're in a hospital or, it's your, if, even if you're, or if you're at home having your child, amen, almost immediately the baby is handed back to the mom. Amen. There the mother cuddles the baby. Amen. She may try to nurse the baby. I don't know. Hallelujah. But the baby is handed almost directly back to the mother. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is there, amen, that she uh, becomes more so emotionally connected with that child than anybody else on the planet. Amen. She, she's emotionally connected with that child before anybody else. She is given the opportunity, in most cases at least, amen, to physically hold that baby in her arms that she has been carrying in her womb for nine months. Hallelujah. She gets to hold it for the first time. Amen. She gets to cuddle it. Amen. Uh, for the first time. Hallelujah. Amen. Emotionally connecting with that child. Amen. And she should have that right. She carried that baby for nine months and then went through labor to bring that child into the world. And through her birth pains, everything changes for that mother. Through her birth pains, everything changes for that mother. Her, her influence on that child's life is so important then at birth, amen, and then throughout the years of development, for that child's life. Hallelujah. In the animal kingdom, most of the time, it's the mother's role. Or it is the mother who takes the role. I don't know if it's just natural, amen, in the animal kingdom. Or if the moms that bear those babies out there in the animal kingdom just take that role for themselves. Amen. They take the role of being, amen, the fierce protectors of their offspring. Most of the time, it's the mothers that protects the babies. The orangutan, the polar bears, or bears in general, elephants, cheetahs, penguins, and amen, almost every animal, hallelujah, is the mother. Not all, but most all animals, it's the mother that becomes the protector of her children, praise God. So is it with most humans as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Women protect their young. Praise God. Amen. We've all heard the statement, don't mess with mama bear. That ain't always referring to the animal kingdom, even though, amen, in my encounters with bears, whenever I saw bear cubs, I didn't hang around in the woods when I saw bear cubs. I got back to my car pretty quick because I knew wherever a bear cub was, there was a mama bear somewhere close by. Now, I don't want to tangle with mama bear. Hallelujah. There's a lot of human mama bears that you and I don't want to tangle with. They will rip your eyeballs out of your sockets <laughs> if you mess with their babies. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, amen. And, hey, amen, that, that's the role that they take on, praise God, when they bring children into the world. Hallelujah. They become prime protection for that child, right? They do that. Amen. There's a unique way that humans do that. How can a woman become a protector of her children? They do that by creating. Listen to me, women. Amen. They do that by creating a kind and loving and caring relationship with that child. Hallelujah. They bond with that child. Uh, they instill trust and security, amen, for that child, amen, so that if that child ever has a reason to fear something, amen, they will know where to run and who to run to. So they develop this relationship with that child with their loving care. Hallelujah. Amen. Relationship with that child, they instill trust and security, in that child, they protect them. They wrap their arms around them. They love on them. They cuddle them. Hallelujah. And in doing all these little gestures that we see moms do today, amen, they are creating a trust in that child that if ever they get in a fearful situation, they can run, amen, to mom. I remember preaching a message years and years and uh, so many years ago. I can't even remember how many years ago now, but I remember preaching a message probably back in the middle 1980s. Amen. Preaching a message entitled, Mama's Dress Tail Was Made for Hanging On. 
Mama's dress tail was made for hanging on. <laughs> I could say a lot about that, but I better not this morning. Hallelujah. But I saw pictures, amen, back then of old pictures. Uh, back when photography was relatively new, amen, there were a lot of adults that were afraid of getting their pictures taken. Hallelujah. They were taught not to smile in those pictures. They were taught to look stern and you know, all that kind of stuff. We all see those pictures on, on the walls of Cracker Barrel and on the walls of other restaurants and the walls of people's homes. Hallelujah. Just people standing there just looking as stern and mean as they could. <laughs> Hallelujah. But also in some of those old photographs, I saw children being photographed. Amen. And as I was preparing that sermon, I remember, amen, talking about seeing those photos and seeing those little babies. Amen. Just Amen. Hanging on the mama's skirt tail. They were there to get a picture taken, something that comes freely or so easily to us today. But back then, those, amen, that snap of that picture, that light going off and all that stuff was fearful, amen, to children back then. So they would hide behind mama and hang on to her, her skirt tail or her dress tail as they were trying to get those family photos and pictures back there, amen, when photography was just becoming important. Hallelujah. Amen. How many fears, amen, did we uh, overcome in life by just having a mother's lap to set in. How many fears did we overcome in life as children? Amen. As having a lap to set in, having arms to wrap around us, and having a dress tail to hang on to. We, can't, we overcame a lot of stuff as kids, just having a protector in our lives. Hallelujah. Somebody... Who was going to look out for our best interest? Praise God. I remember on one of my mother's birthdays. She was around 80 years old, somewhere around there. And I just had a hankering to sit in her lap again. I was probably close to 50 years old. I just sat there at mama's birthday and I had a hankering to sit in her lap again. I got to sit in my mama's lap. <laughs> she was sitting in a big old chair, about like what brought Brother Barfield all reared back there and relaxed, you know. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I walked over there to Mom, and I just, I gently, I didn't put all of them, I'm not going to sit in his lap for sure. Amen. I, I, I gently sat down in her lap, and somebody took a picture of me, amen, sitting there in my mom's lap. I was 50 years old. She was probably somewhere around 80 years old. I don't remember the, the times and the dates now, but praise God. Oh, if I could just sit in my mama's lap one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. I was glad that I got to do it. I'm glad that I got a picture of me doing that. Praise God. Hallelujah. But amen. When I sat down in my mom's lap, I, I was going down memory lane. Amen. Thinking about all that she had taught me and all that she had, amen, told me. Hallelujah. The life that I had shared with her. Hallelujah. How much pressure she took off of me just by being there. Hallelujah. Miss Jarvis. Miss Jarvis wanted to help women to know their role as a parent. That was her original intent for Mother's Day. A mother's role is to protect her children and to create an environment for healthy learning. Mothers are teachers. If you didn't know that, now you do know that. Mothers are teachers. You will be, amen, the first teacher that your child will ever sit in a classroom for. Hallelujah. It may not be a classroom, amen, like a, a school classroom, but in your home, amen, your home becomes your classroom. Amen. You are the teacher and your child is the student. Mothers are teachers training their children. In Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hallelujah. So training is a part of being a mother. Back in Exodus chapter 1 and verse 2, there's a story about Moses back there. I'm not going to go back there and read it for you. Hey Amen. If you hadn't already read it, you need to go and read it for yourself. Hallelujah. Maybe you'll remember it. Amen. If you hadn't read it in a long time. Hey Amen. Moses was born in an unfortunate time when Pharaoh wanted all of the male children to be killed. For whatever reason, Pharaoh wanted all of the male children to be killed. Moses' mother 
took time to build an ark of bulrushes to hide him in. Amen. And he was hiding in that ark when Pharaoh's daughter found him in the river. When she saw the child and saw that he was a Hebrew child, the Bible says that she had compassion on him and wanted him for herself. But she had a problem. She couldn't nurse the baby. Hallelujah. And just so happened, Miriam, Moses' sister, was standing right there, amen, on the bank of the river when Moses was discovered by Pharaoh's daughter. Hallelujah. And she suggested, amen, to Pharaoh's daughter, I know a woman that can nurse this child. So evidently, Pharaoh's daughter looked at her and said, go get her. Amen. So she ran just a little ways down the river. Amen. And she brought back, amen, who became the nurse of Moses. Amen. And it was none other than his mother herself. Amen. So God made a way, amen, for Moses' mother to stay with him. Hallelujah, because God had a calling. God had a purpose. Amen. God had a future for Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what every parent here needs to look at. Amen. You are, you are parenting children. Amen. That have a future in God. That have a purpose in God. That have a calling of God. Amen. So you need to be investing your best in them so that they in return can do their best in God. Oh, hallelujah. We don't know just how long Moses' and mother was able to keep him and nurse him as her own, but the day came that Pharaoh's daughter took him home with her, took her out of the arms of his mother and took her to the palace. Here's what's important about that story about Moses. His mother had taught him enough in his childhood to know that he was a Hebrew and to know that he was special in the sight of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 30 reads like this. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come two years, there's a lot of, there's a lot of time there. He went from being a baby to being a grown man now. By faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the, the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Hallelujah. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that uh, destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians essayed to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. Talking about future events in Moses' life. Moses was the man that led the children of Israel out of Egypt, amen, in the direction to the promised land. It was Moses, amen, hallelujah, that led them out of Egypt, hallelujah, amen. Why was he able to lead them out of Egypt? Because his mother taught him right. His mother in that time that she nursed him, Amen. Let him know without a shadow of a doubt that she was his mother. Amen. That he was a Hebrew. Amen. That he had a special calling of God upon his life and that he was going to do something great for God someday. Where did Moses learn who he was? From his mama. Amen. Where did he learn? Amen. To have faith in God. From his mama. Where did he learn? Amen, that God was a deliverer. He learned that from his mother. Amen, where did he learn? That by making right choices, he could help himself, amen, and a whole nation of people, amen, find deliverance, amen, from Egyptian bondage. Praise God. Hallelujah. All of that came from his mother. Amen. So I'm asking all of the moms here this morning, are you listening to me? 
Are you listening to me? It was a mother's advice and counsel and teaching and training, amen, that prepared him, amen, for a bright future in God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, hey, are you listening? If you're listening to me this morning but you're realizing, hey, I hadn't been putting my best foot forward for my children then you can turn your heart around. You can turn your heart toward God this morning. You can make up your mind, i got to do better. When we read the story of the virtuous woman, you read down through there, you know, I'm glad. I, when I read the, the story of the virtuous woman, I'm glad I'm not a woman. <laughs> Amen. I'm intimidated by those scriptures. Hallelujah. I'm sure they are intimidated by other women. That's not the intent. Amen. Of those scriptures, it is to challenge women to be better. And it's challenging women, amen, to be virtuous women and do the best that they can. Hallelujah. So, amen, you can turn your heart toward God today. Amen. So then if you turn your heart toward God, then you can lead your children, amen, to turn their hearts toward God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 7. It's mighty quiet in here this morning. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. I know it's not just talking to moms here. It's talking to moms and dads. Hallelujah. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by thy way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, amen. When you as a parent... Love God with all of your heart. When you as a mother love God with all of your heart, then that same love that you have for God will be extended to your offspring. That same love that you have for God will be extended to your children. Hallelujah. Amen. And you in return will want to teach them about God. Amen. When we love God with all of our heart, then we want other folks to know God and to love God with all our heart. And who else would we rather convince to love God other than our children? Hallelujah. The neat thing about this story there in Deuteronomy is that parents, listen to me, parents don't have to wait for a preacher to lead their children to salvation. They can lead their own children to salvation themselves. Amen. You don't have to wait for a preacher, amen, to, amen, lead your child into salvation. There's nothing wrong with you leading your child into salvation. In fact, it's a part of your duty as a parent, amen, to lead your child into salvation. Amen. How do I do that, Brother Morrell? By teaching them about God, by talking to them about God, amen, for, by living for God in front of them, by being the example that they need. Children don't need hypocrites as parents. They don't need parents to say one thing in the house of God and do something else in the, in the house. <laughs> Amen. They need mom and dad to speak the truth and live the truth wherever they are. Come on now. Hallelujah. There's one thing about it. You can't fool a child very long. Praise God. They know. Amen. Some people believe in generational curses. Yeah. We hear a lot about generational curses today. Hallelujah. If a man or a dad uh, or a woman or a mom or a dad, either one, is an alcoholic or a drug addict, then the kids, amen, it is just deemed in so many people's mind, then the kids are going to walk in that same path as mom and dad did. I'm here to tell you that's not always the case. Hallelujah. That's not always the case. Hallelujah. Well, Amen. If, in fact, there can be generational curses, why cannot or why can't there be generational blessings? It's right the opposite of curses. If there can be generational curses, why can't they be generational blessings? I'm telling you, according to the Word of God, there can be. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, Verses 5 through 7, 
The Bible says, and this is Paul writing to Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and then in thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that that same faith is in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Paul is writing to Timothy. He said, when I think about your faith, I cannot help but to think about the faith of your grandmother. Lois, I can't help but to think about the faith of your mother, Eunice. Amen. You know what Paul is saying? Timothy, you are blessed to have, amen, a grandmother and a mother who is a believer. Young folks that are here today, amen, your mom and dad take you to church, get you involved in Sunday school, in youth, uh, youth projects and in youth groups around the house of God. You are blessed beyond measure. Hallelujah, because if you can catch a hope, amen, of the faith that your mom and dad has in God and that faith, amen, can come alive in you, hallelujah, amen, then you can grow up and not have the spirit of fear, amen, but a power and a love and a sound mind. You don't have to live through life with fear and anxiety tormenting you all the time. Hallelujah, if you got faith, faith is the opposite of fear. Hallelujah, amen. And that fear can come through you or come to you through believing parents and grandparents. Did you notice there's nothing said here about his grandfather nor his father? In Acts chapter 16 and verse 1, the Bible says, Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed. But his father was a Greek. We got a verse of Scripture that tells us something about Timothy's father. The, the Bible don't say that his father was a believer. History, amen, says that Timothy's father was not a believer. It just simply says he was a Greek. Hallelujah. But his mother, <coughs> amen, was a believer. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. So this morning, we can see the influence of a godly mother here this morning. Praise God. In Psalms 127 and verse 3, the Bible says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. I know I use that in almost every child dedication that I do, and I'll continue to do that because I'm simply trying to remind moms and dads, amen, that their children really belong to God. And your children this morning really belong to God. Amen. They may have been produced, amen, as a fruit of your womb, amen, but they belong to God. And as a mother and as a parent, you got to do everything that you can to make sure that they stay belonging to God. Hallelujah. Amen. If God has blessed you with children this morning, amen, he wants you to involve yourself in establishing them in the faith of God. Hallelujah. Psalms 113 and verse 9, it says, He maketh the barren woman to keep house. We've seen it happen many times. A couple gets married, and for years and years and years, they may not be able to have a child. Amen. But then just like something, something changes. Amen. I don't know if somebody in prayer reaches God or somebody, amen, touches the throne of God on their behalf. Amen. But then just miraculously, all of a sudden, uh, amen, after years of not being able to have a child, amen, that, that lady gets becomes uh, pregnant, amen, with a baby. Hallelujah. And then, amen, many times as it happens that way, hallelujah, following that child is another child. And then after that child is another child. Hallelujah. Amen. Barrenness can be conquered. Amen. Amen, through prayer and through fasting and through seeking God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says God maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise you, the Lord. Amen. A joyful mother 
I want you to think about that phrase just a minute. He makes a woman that had been barren for years to, amen, be able to produce a child, and then she becomes a joyful mother of children. Praise you, the Lord. Now, I, I don't live in a little bubble. I don't live, you know, in darkness. So I realized this morning, amen, and I know that being a mother is not always joyful. Some mom should have took that as a note to say amen, Brother Ralph. I should have got a little bit more support out of that statement. <laughs> Hallelujah, especially for the mothers in the house. Amen. Being a mother is not always joyful. It can be quite stressful. Amen. Hallelujah. It can be quite stressful, especially, now I can't cover all the bases this morning, just the necessary things, especially when we lose focus about living for God ourselves. Whenever a mother loses focus on living for God herself, amen, then her job as a mother loses its joy and it becomes stressful, overbearing. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm going to close here in a few minutes. So let's refocus this morning on the original intent of Mother's Day. It was to help mothers know God themselves because she was a religious woman. Amen. And she was concerned about the salvation of the women in her community. So she did not just want Amen. To try to teach these women how to raise their children. She wanted to teach these women how to love God themselves. Amen. Knowing in return that they would then in return uh, teach their children how to love God and serve God. Hallelujah. To all the mothers who live for God this morning. To all of the mothers that are here that live for God. That go to church. That take their children to church that get them involved in church, that read their Bible to their children and read Bible story books to their children and, amen, set them down and talk to them about God, amen, periodically through the day and maybe pray with them by their bedside at night before they go to sleep, hallelujah. Amen, all I know to do this morning is to say thank you, amen, for involving yourself in your children's salvation. If you already do these things, if you already know your role, and if you're already fulfilling your duties to your children, thank you. Thank you. You deserve every accolade that comes your way today. You deserve every bouquet of flowers. You deserve every gift, every card. Amen. That special meal that your children is going to take you out to eat today. Amen. You deserve it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for involving yourself in your children's salvation. But I want to close today in the next few minutes to talk to moms who are not attending church. Maybe you're looking online. Hallelujah. Maybe you're sitting here this morning. I don't know. And you hadn't. You know, and I know. Listen, I know we've all been through this pandemic. The church has not been. Uh, you know, uh, we hadn't been able to come to church in a normal sense in quite some time. I think this is only our third service after uh, we started having church again, praise God. So we're, we're trying to get kicked back into gear. We're trying to get back into motion. We're trying to get back, <clears throat> amen, into going back to church on a regular basis, praise God, hallelujah. But if you, amen, are sitting here this morning and you hadn't been attending church, amen, you need to leave this service today knowing, uh, amen, that you need to get back to attending church. If you're looking online and you're not attending church, hallelujah, there's coming a day, amen, that this pandemic is going to be done and go over with, amen, uh, said and done and passed, hallelujah. Amen, and when we get there, don't be the one that stays at home, don't be the one that sits at home and looks at church online. Amen. You cannot forsake the assembling of yourselves together in the house of God. You can't forsake it forever. You got to get back to church for your own sake. You got to get back to church for your own salvation's sake. 
Hallelujah. So moms, if you're not attending church, you need to think seriously about getting back to church. Because there's one thing important. Amen. You don't want your children to get accustomed to not going to church. Hallelujah. You don't want your children to get accustomed to not going to church. If y'all come on to the music, y'all will help me out here. The thing you need to understand, Mom, is that you need church fellowship yourself for your own salvation. Hallelujah. Timothy's mom was a Jewish, but she was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. She might have been born a Jew, amen, but she believed that Jesus Christ was the Savior of the world, amen, that he was God manifested in flesh and he came and suffered and died on Calvary and shed his blood, amen, for her salvation as well as the Gentiles. She was a Jewish, but she was a believer. Moses' mom, amen, hallelujah, was a believer in God. And their belief in God Amen. Calls them to instill in the hearts of their children their own belief in God. Now listen. Amen. When I, I was standing over there this morning, I was just kind of thinking about what I was going to say here today. And I didn't realize just how quickly things can turn around for an individual that makes up their mind. You know, I'm sick and tired of living for the devil. I'm going to live for God. You know, I'm going I'm to go to church. I'm going I'm to go to an altar. I'm going to repent. Amen. I'm going to get baptized in Jesus' name. I'm going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to live for God. I'm sick and tired of the enemy and what he's doing in my life. I did that in March of 1979. I got sick and tired of the devil, the enemy. Amen. Him ruling over me with an iron thumb and an iron fist and Hallelujah, I went to an altar, amen, on a Sunday night, 1224 Constitution Road, Atlanta, Georgia. Hallelujah, I made my way to an altar, and there in that altar, all the chains began to break and fall off of me. Hallelujah. I learned sometime after that that I was a first-generation apostolic that I was a first-generation Pentecostal, apostolic. And I thought, well, I know people that are fourth and fifth and sixth-year generational Pentecostals. Hallelujah. It seems like yesterday that I made my way to that altar. Yesterday, I gave my heart to God, not knowing anything about my future. But things happened relatively in a life of shorts, like a weaver shuttle, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. If you've ever been into a cotton mill, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Those old, those old weaver shovels are thrown from one end of the loom to the other end of the loom. It's making noise. It's It's loud. Hallelujah. And I began to think at the cotton mill one night, amen, just how quickly life can be over. Life, life is like a weaver shell. Praise God. But in the short time that I've been living for God, I've been living for God 41 years. You may think that's forever. No, it ain't forever. After 41 years, it seems like I'm just now getting started. <laughs> but now that I look back to my family, I was a first generation apostolic. Now I've got kids in church. That makes them second generation apostolics. Now I got grandkids in church. This happened to my family. Now I got grandkids in church. They're third generation apostolics. Now I got great grandkids that are in the house this morning. Hallelujah. And I know they're not old enough to know everything about God, but they're in the house of God learning about God because they got moms and dads. Amen. They want to raise their children to be apostolics. So if they if they grow up, and I'm sure that they will, if they grow up to be apostolics, that'll be four generations of apostolics in my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've heard of people being sixth generation apostolics. I, I just stood in awe when I heard those things, not, not, not realizing. 
Amen. That pretty soon in my own family, there would be second, third, and fourth generation apostolic folks in my own family. See, what you need to know this morning is that you need church fellowship. I'm not just preaching to all the moms that are here in, in the house this morning. I'm preaching to mothers that are looking online right now. If you've gotten comfortable staying out of church, then you just got too comfortable. Amen. And you need to stir yourself up. Amen. To get yourself back to the house of God. Amen. Because you need church. Your children need church. Your grandchildren need church. You need church fellowship. Your kids need church fellowship. They need other young people, amen, with like faith as they have, amen, to grow up with in God. Thank you, Mom, for bringing your children to church this morning. Even though we wouldn't have Sunday school, even though we wouldn't, uh, amen, having Sunday school, you thought enough of your children to bring them to church this morning to listen to an old man preach about Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 31 talks about the virtuous woman and her household. I want to read it to you one more time. If they could find it right quickly on the screen, Proverbs 31, 27, all the way through 30 this time. She looketh well to the ways of her household. And as she's looking well to the ways of her household, she refuses to eat the bread of idleness. I'm not going to just leave my kids to their own imagination. I'm not going to just sacrifice my kids to anything and everything that's coming over the Internet today. I'm going to keep a close eye on them and I'm going to watch them. Amen. And I'm going to hover over them. Amen. Like an eagle does. Amen. Her eaglets. Praise God. I'm telling you, folks. Amen. There's an enemy out there that wants to take your dead, that wants to take your children. Amen. Snatch them out of your arms and amen. Put them out there in the streets on alcohol and drugs this morning. Amen. Every mom needs to wake up and realize, hallelujah, amen, you cannot eat the bread of idleness and be the protector that your children need. Verse 28, her children arise up. <laughs> amen. And call her blessed, her husband also. And he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Hallelujah. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she is to be praised. So my purpose of coming here this morning and preaching this sermon, hallelujah, is twofold. I want to praise the mothers that have taken their job seriously and you're doing everything within your power to raise your, raise your children right. I want to challenge the moms who have not taken that role as seriously maybe as you should have. I want to challenge you, amen, to get your heart right with God, amen, to reestablish your faith in God the way that you had at one time. Get reestablished in God. Hallelujah. Look at your children and say, hey, honey, we're going back to church. We're going back to Sunday school. We're going to go back, amen, to the youth group. Hallelujah. We're going to get you involved, amen, in the house of God. If the ways of your household need some fixing, if the ways of your household need some changing, be virtuous. Make up your mind that you're going to change those things while you still got a chance. It's not too late. You may have raised teenagers now. They, they're not, not coming to church. Maybe somewhere uh, back then, amen, you got out of church when your children were young and now they're, they're teenage years and they're getting stubborn and rebellious and they're back talking and arguing and fussing with you left and right. I challenge you not to throw in the towel on those kids. 
I challenge you not to give up on those kids. Amen. You need to go home and look at those kids and say, hey, mama's had a change of heart. Amen. Go home today and say, mama's had a change of heart. Hallelujah. Folks, we're going back to church. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the church will welcome you with open arms. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we want everybody that can be saved to be saved. I want you to stand to your feet this morning. I want every mother, amen, to, to, to realize that I am here today to say happy Mother's Day to you. I hope you enjoy your day. I want you, amen, as you exit the sanctuary today, amen, to go back there to back and receive the gift that Sister Morel is going to be handing out to all the moms. I also want you to take advantage of, amen, the backdrop that we have back there for you to take a picture with your mom on this Mother's Day. They are very very, very important to you today, and they will be more so in the future. As you one day have to go down, back down memory lane, pull out the old family albums. Hallelujah. Look at pictures of a mom. Hallelujah. That may have passed away years before. But you can sit there and look at those pictures and know my mom did the best that she could. My mom did the best that she could to raise me right, raise me in church, raise me to have faith in God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Come on, and it will be a happy Mother's Day for all who make up their mind. I'm going to get back to the house of God. I'm going to get back and rebuild my faith in God, reestablish myself in the kingdom of God, Reunite myself, hallelujah, with the fellowship of God's people. Come on, somebody. The original intent of Mother's Day was to teach mothers how to raise their children. You know what the intention of the church is today? You know what the original intent of the church is today? To help moms and dads to know how to raise their children. Hallelujah. Come on, you need to look at that child this morning and realize their value to you. Oh, yes, they are very valuable. They're very valuable to you. Hallelujah. They're going to be very valuable to God in their time. Hallelujah. As he places his anointing on them and begins to use them in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh, God, this morning, touch everybody. Hallelujah. Touch those that are looking online, God. Touch every mom that may be bowing her head right now and crying and praying. Hallelujah. And making up her mind. Brother Morrell, thank you for preaching to me this morning. I'm going to make my way back to the house of God. Thank you for telling me what my duties are and my responsibilities are to my children. To make sure that they hear about God. To make sure that they know God. To make sure that they have a loving mother. A loving mother. Hallelujah. That's going to help raise him in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. With every hand raised this morning, every heart crying out to God. God, I pray your blessings, God, this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I pray your blessings, God, this morning on every mom in the house, every mom that is looking on. Hallelujah, God. If they need to make some changes, God, I pray that they will make up their mind to do that. Hallelujah, God. Right quickly, God. Oh, God, and find their way back to the house of God. Hallelujah, God. Holy Ghost, move right now, God. Spirit of God, move in this house. Spirit of God, move. Amen on everyone that's watching. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we need your touch. We need your divine touch on our lives. So that we can be all that we need to be for you, God. Hallelujah. for me. I love you. I, love you. I, need, you. I need you. I need you. I 
I need you to survive. says a man's not going to live to himself neither is he going to die to himself somebody's going to influence you somebody's going to influence you I'm just trying to be a positive influence to help you find your way back to God this morning we need each other especially in times like we're facing today oh, we need a shoulder to lean on we need an ear to listen to our prayer request. Hallelujah. We need a friend that will go to prayer and help us battle through whatever obstacles are standing in our way, keeping us from being all that we need to be for God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Come on. You feel after God right now. Why don't you take just a moment? Why don't you take just a moment? Hallelujah. In this house, feel the presence of God. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. God, if there's a backslider in the house, God, let them feel your nearness. God, if there's a, someone cold and indifferent in the house this morning, God, let them feel. Hallelujah. Your compelling spirit. Hallelujah, God, compelling them back to the house of God, to the household of faith, uh, to the place where they're going to find strength and refuge in you this morning, God. Hallelujah. I know time is slipping by and you got plans for the day. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoy your day, Mom. I hope all the children enjoy your mom's company today. Hallelujah. So with those words, I'm just going to simply say, Hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. I guess I got an announcement coming up here. Please have all of the children to go to the construction table because we have a special gift for them at the construction table out in the hallway there. And I guess that's from Brother Thomas and Sister Leah there. So all the children go by the construction table out in the hallway. They have a gift for you there. Moms, go by the reception center out there. Receive your gift.